Hello friends, in the earlier class we discussed about the factors which influence spoilage of foods and among the various agents microorganisms the growth and multiplication of microorganisms has been found to be the major reason for the spoilage of the food. We saw that what are the various agents or factors which influence the growth and multiplication of microorganisms in food and therefore, those factors become the major target are major action points for preservation of food. So, in today's lecture we will take up the issues or the different uh, matters related to traditional food preservation technologies. This topic is organized in two part the part one we will discuss today and the part two we will take up in the next lecture. The major techniques which are traditionally used for preservation of food are based upon those limited set of factors that influence microbial ecology of foods. And in the earlier class we discussed, we saw what are those factors which influence microbial ecology in foods. So, most of these techniques they act through either slowing down or in some instances the complete inhibition of microbial growth. Few techniques act by direct inactivation or killing of the target bacteria, yeast or molds. In addition to those mean inhibiting and inactivating techniques, there are a few comparatively newly procedures that restrict the access of microorganisms to food products. So, accordingly all the food processing technologies which are being used currently as well as from ancient time traditionally they can be broadly classified into three major categories. And the category one is those set of technologies that work on the principle of slowing down or inhibition of the growth of microorganisms. So, let us see what are the factors which cause slowing down or inhibiting the growth of microorganisms in food. And earlier class you saw that temperature is one factor, one important factor which influences the growth and multiplication of microorganisms in food. If lower down the temperature, the growth rate of the microorganism is reduced and therefore, this lowest temperature or lowering of the temperature is used as one factor for slowing down or inhibiting the growth of microorganism in food and accordingly cold storage or chill storage or freezing and frozen storage are the two traditionally used food preservation technologies that work on the principle of lowering of temperature of the food. The other factors which is saw earlier that water activity or osmotic concentration that is either lowering of water activity or raising the osmotic concentration of the food influences the microbial growth and multiplication. Rather, when the water activity is lowered down, the microbial growth is reduced. Similarly, if the osmotic concentration is raised, the microbial growth and the processes are traditionally used preservation technologies which work on these principles include drying 
and freeze drying, curing and salting, conserving with added sugars. Another technology which is based on slowing down the microbial growth is to manipulate the nutrients present in food in such a manner that microorganism is not able to utilize or use that nutrient and that is one the compartmentalization of the aqueous phase in water in IL emulsion. A good example of this is butter that is the milk fat it is present in the form in milk in oil in water emulsion and in this form it can be accessed easily by microbial enzymes and other factors and it can get spoiled. However, however, when this fat is extracted from the milk its phase change and it comes in water in oil emulsion and this the microorganism find it difficult to break this emulsion and enter this or utilize this type of emulsion. Similarly, decreased level of oxygen in the environment around the food or within the food that is another way of uh, slowing down or inhibiting the growth of microorganisms in food and the vacuum technology or nitrogen packaging or the common examples which work on this basis. Similarly, controlling the gaseous composition that increasing the level of carbon dioxide that is lowering the level of oxygen and increasing the level of carbon dioxide. This uh, in significantly influences the respiration rate of the microorganisms and this is this that is lowering of the oxygen and increasing the carbon dioxide form the basis of two major processes like control atmosphere storage or modified atmosphere packaging. Similarly, increasing acid content of the food either by addition of acids or by formation in situ formation of certain acids like lactic acid or acetic acid by bacterial fermentation or other such reactions these are the another processes which work. Another factor that is the not many microorganism that is the spoiled microorganism are able to survive under a higher alcoholic concentration or may be more than 14 percent or 16 percent alcohol concentration. So, another set of technology which is used for slowing down or inhibiting the growth of microorganism is by increasing the content of alcohol in food material or in beverages uh, that is how the many of the fruit juices etcetera have been preserved traditionally and that is by vinification or brewing that is conversion of uh, that is malt etcetera into beer and then by fort using appropriate fortification technologies uh, one can increase the alcohol content into the material. In another important method is again by uh, changing the acidity or alkalinity of the food material mostly the acidity and in this case there are certain chemical preservatives which can be used and these preservatives may be inorganic compounds like sulphides, nitrites, organic compounds such as propionate, sarborate, benzoate, paraben etcetera or antibiotics like niacin and pimeracin etcetera they might influence the growth or complete inhibition of the. So, accordingly these are the one set of the technologies which are used traditionally for preservation of food and one thing important here is that is in all these factors when you are controlling it does not result into the killing or inactivation of the microorganism. By all these factors by controlling all these factors we are just causing the microorganism to go under the stationary phase that is either this it comes under this stationary phase or this uh, exponential phase its rate is lowered down. So, when these factors are removed 
the microorganism if it finds again a favorable condition it will grow and multiply another set of technology particularly where the toxicogenic or pathogenic microorganisms are of concern there we have to make sure or ensure that these microorganisms bacteria toxicogenic bacteria or other organisms are completely inactivated or killed from the system and in that case we have to provide some sort of energy for the killing of these microorganisms and traditionally heating has been used to inactivate the microorganism and there are processes like pasteurization or sterilization that is whether we are killing only that is mesophilic group of microorganism or non pathogenic microorganism or spoilage microorganism etc reducing the load and then in the sterilization that is all forms of microorganisms are removed the of course other way of uh, killing the microorganisms is that providing radiation energy and the processes which used for food irradiation include radiolization radiation red fertilization etc of course these aspects food irradiation we will take up separately in some other lecture the another third group of technology which is rather uh, comparatively a new addition in traditional food preservation technology list and that is the restricting the access of microorganisms to the food like for example we by appropriate means by one or the other means either by treatment of the ingredients with ethylene oxide etc or by treatment of the packaging material with hydrogen peroxide or heat or irradiation etc we try to lower down or bring down the contamination level of the food or fully decontaminate the food material all right or decontaminate the ingredient decontaminate the packaging material and then aseptic processing that is aseptic thermal processing and packaging to make sure that there is no recontamination so here by this process we are reducing the load of the microorganisms from the food and making sure that its a self life is increased so in summary you can say that majority of the traditionally used food preservation technologies they work on the principles of controlling the ph and our water activity of the food and which in turn that is the ph and uh, water activity lowering of these factors prevents the growth and multiplication of spoilage microorganism in other instances where pathogenic or toxicogenic microorganisms are of concern heat treatment is used so let us see little details of these aspects that is how the control of ph and water activity influences the growth and multiplication of the food what is mechanism that is how which when we change the ph microbial growth is reduced or eliminated all these things let us see in detail a little detail control of ph the ph as we have discussed earlier also is an important factor affecting the growth of microorganism in food and why but and how it does because it affects the microbial energy metabolism involving the build up of gradient of hydrogen ion across the microbial cell membrane and it also affects the microbial enzyme activity 
and stability of the cellular macromolecules. Also, pH affects the sensory properties of many foods. For example, if you increase or decrease the pH below a certain level, the food may be more uh, acidic, its taste may be sour, it may be more alkaline and therefore, it becomes it may become that sensorily unacceptable. Apart from this that is the changes in the pH apart from affecting the sensory properties, they also influence the consistency of food. For example, the lowering of the pH can cause coagulation of milk casein and milk proteins and it may change even coagulation of the milk casein may change the physical state of the milk such even it may change the solubility of the pectin which may cause even softening of the fruits etcetera or changes in the fruit texture. It may result in inactivation of the enzymes like amylases etcetera in dry dough. So, all these changes in the constituents of the food which take place due to lowering of the pH may cause significant change in the consistency or textural characteristics of the food material. Also, the pH of the food is uh, determined by free carbonyl and amino group in low molecular weight compounds and to a lesser extent in the cellular macromolecules like protein, nucleic acid, polysaccharide etcetera. There are different methods of controlling pH in food. It may be the choice of the raw material that is proper selection of the raw material whether it is a plant source or animal tissues etcetera that is depending upon that is what we actually want that is suppose we there is a microorganism which can likely they it can grow at a optimum pH and we want that in our food that particular group of microorganism should not grow. So, we can by proper selection of ingredient or certain additive etcetera we can manipulate the pH of that food or it can also influence or control the pH by addition of certain acid or by allowing the in situ formation of acid or alkali or acidic or alkaline low molecular weight compounds. Okay. And it is both minded that is the growth and multiplication of the microorganism or growth and inhibition of the microorganism may be influenced by both either low or high pH that is the microorganisms can grow in a food of low pH. In fact, they find that uh, a low pH food or even uh, that is like the food which are which have pH near neutrality or towards acidic side the microbial organism find a better environment. Most of the food that we eat they are either low acid food or acid food. So, the majority of the microorganism can easily grow into the low acid food, a few of them can also grow into the acid food, but there are a few foods for example, egg which we consume generally that is it is a highly alkaline food material or in fact, it has a pH about 9. So, it is alkaline food and this at this pH at uh, even 9 it favors the growth and multiplication of microorganism. So, you can say that the pH on the lower side as well as on the higher side it will influence the growth and multiplication of the microorganisms in food. The for the control of the pH one important factor is that use of organic acid. So, they become an important step or important uh, agent for 
food preservation, important additives for food preservation. This effect of organic acid and microorganism in food depends on two major factors. Number one, that is their dissociation constant. How they get dissociated when they come in contact with food and secondly, that is the ability of their undissociated form to penetrate the cytoplasmic membrane. That is the, these acids, there are certain acids which do not dissociate, rather their undissociated form penetrates into the cytoplasmic membrane and goes into the cell and therefore, it causes that uh, disturbs that pH homeostasis and of course, there is a build up of that is a hydrogen ion gradient across the membrane the inside and outside and that actually affects the normal physiological process of the cell and its growth is uh, inhibited or lowered down. So, some of the organic acid as I told you like sarbic acid, benzoic acid, propionic acid etcetera, they act virtually by the second way like uh, their undissociated form penetrates into the cytoplasmic membrane and does its job and accordingly these organic acids are classified as preservatives in food legislation. So, the organic acids or other acids which have the ability to penetrate into the microbial cell in undissociated form and to create gradient of this disturbed homeostasis inside the cell, they actually are called preservatives or designated as preservatives. The minimum pH for growth as well as the rate of inactivation of microorganism by acid is affected by certain factors and that is that is number one nature of the acidulant that is as I told you the acid which is added that is its nature that its ability to penetrate into the cytoplasmic membrane in its undissociated form. Also the presence of other inhibitory factors like low water activity, certain other preservatives, low temperature all these they may interfere with the energy metabolism or which can increase the need of maintenance energy for the cell of the microorganisms. And thirdly of course, more importantly that is the growth and multiplication or inactivation of microorganism influenced by pH is the ability of the microorganism to react to the acid stress and to maintain passive or active homeostasis minded. That is how this cell or microorganism is able to react to the acid stress and how it is able to maintain the pH homeostasis either by active means or by passive means. Passive pH homeostasis means that the microorganism either prevent external protons from entering the cell or increase the buffering capacity of their cytoplasm by synthesis of glutamate or citrates. Active pH homeostasis means that is cell maintain their cytoplasmic pH through metabolic activities. The other factor is the control of water activity. In the earlier class when we discussed about water and its influence on food stability, we saw that this water activity is one of the major factors which influences the growth and multiplication of microorganisms in food. In fact, optimum water activity for the growth of the majority of the microorganisms is in the range of 0.99 to 
to 0.98 and every microorganism has a limiting AW value that is below which it will not be able to grow, it will not be able to form spores or it will not be able to produce toxin and this is taken care of in while there is a creating condition for minimizing the microbial growth. The this AW limits for the required or AW requirement for the growth of different group of microorganisms varies. For example, the common spoilage bacteria they are inhibited at an AW of about 0.97 that is if the water activity of the food material is brought below 0.97 most of the food spoilage bacteria will not be able to grow and multiply. This the pathogenic or toxicogenic bacteria they are comparatively little more tolerant. For example, that clastidial species of the bacteria they can grow at a water activity level of 0.94, bacillus species 0.93, Staphylococcus aureus is considered to be the most tolerant pathogen that is the pathogen which can tolerate maximum AW to the maximum level and it can grow at as low as AW 0.86 under aerobic conditions as well as 0.91 AW under anaerobic conditions. Majority of the eastern molds are able to proliferate at an AW below 0.86 while some osmophilic yeasts and xerophilic molds are capable of slow growth at just above 0.6 AW. So, it becomes clear that to preserve a food by using reduction of AW that is water activity as a stress factor its AW should be lower to 0.6 that is if it, the AW water activity of a food is brought down below 0.6 it will not support any growth of microorganism in it. However, that is the when we use drying process that is fully dehydrated food they have lower water activity like in the range of 0.3 or so and that is done so as to control the other physicochemical and biochemical reactions other than the water uh, microbial growth that is in dehydrated foods this lowered water activity is does not support any growth of chemical, biochemical or other processes which are deleterious to food texture, flavor, nutritive value and all those. The minimum water activity for growth is always equal or lower than the minimum water activity for toxin production. So, major advances in the control of water activity as a means of food preservation will therefore be contingent upon the improvement of the food sensory aspect that is when we control when we lower down the mean uh, water activity how it influences the sensory characteristics of the food like in the case of pH we have seen same is true here and secondly that is the method of controlling how what is the technique whether it is drying, whether it is freeze drying, whether it is concentration, evaporation etcetera, etcetera that is by which they are so more refinement of the techniques of controlling water activity. Water activity in a food can be controlled either by removing the water from the food by using appropriate dehydration techniques or it can also be controlled by by adding appropriate amounts and types of salt or sugar in the food and allowing the bind what binding of the water with these salts or sugars. So, after having seen that 
influence of pH and uh, water activity and means of their controlling and how their control influences the characteristics of the food material, characteristics of the microbial growth and thereby increasing its shelf life. Let us see the another aspect that is the conventional heat treatment particularly when toxicogenic microorganisms are of concern heat treatment is used. Okay. So, the preservation of food by application of heat is achieved by large scale inactivation of viable microorganisms. Clostridium botulinum is generally considered to be the most heat resistant spore farming bacteria which causes trouble in food processing industries. It can grow in low acid foods and therefore, that uh, surviving spores of this organism are used that they can germinate in the container because inside the container anaerobic environment is maintained and these clostridium botulinum are anaerobic bacteria. So, their spore if they survive the heat process they can grow, they can germinate in the food, they can produce toxin and the toxin which is produced by this clostridium botulinum a very very highly potent toxin even micro microgram of that toxin is sufficient to kill a healthy person. So, the severity of the thermal process which is selected to deliver sufficient lethality to ensure that the processed food is tough achieve commercial sterility, the required shelf life and it does not pose a risk to the public health is a function of the probability of the survival of the target organism. That is heated food, heat processed food, how much whether the complete commercial sterility has been achieved in that food or not, whether the heated food will have required shelf life or not or whether it will support or it will not support a risk of public health is a function that is how the heat treatment is able to kill the target microorganism for example, clostridium botulinum in this case in the case of low acid food. So, so a wide range of in fact variables like seen earlier that is the involving the level, level of water activity or the pH etcetera pH of the product they influence the probability of the survival like these factors they influence the growth of the microorganism. Similarly, they also influence the pro probability of the survival of the microorganisms in the product in the under a given condition and therefore, there is a need that these factors that is the level of water activity pH and other stresses which influence the killing or inactivation of microorganism should be considered while defining the boundary conditions of a thermal process. An empirical approach is generally used to investigate the efficiency of a thermal process in a given practical situation to determine whether the commercial sterility has been achieved or not. And for this purpose, there are certain temperature measuring instruments and these temperature measuring instruments like thermocouples etcetera, they are positioned at the point of slowest heating within a container. That is the point where the probability of survival of a given organism is greatest which is normally the geometrical center of the container. So, that is the, your process should be sufficient enough to give the desired sterility at its slowest heating point. So, the slowest heating point at which at certain uh, several other points the temperature is measured and this a method of lethal rate summation at that point is used to determine the actual delivered lethality and hence 
द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ द सर्वाइवल ऑफ ए टारगेट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड दिस अप्रोच इज यूज टू डेवलप थर्मल प्रोसेस डिजाइंस टू सूट न्यू प्रोडक्ट पैकेजेज एज वेल एज प्रोसेस सिस्टम्स दिस अप्रोच इज ऑल्सो यूज टू इस्टेब्लिश एंड क्वान्टिफाई न्यू प्रोडक्शन सीनेरियोज हेड ऑफ कमर्शियल यूज एंड इट्स यूज टू वैलिडेट ऑल प्रोसेस एट रेगुलर एंड फ्रीक्वेंट इंटरवल्स ड्यूरिंग द लाइफ टाइम ऑफ स्पेसिफिक प्रोडक्शन एंड ऑन एवरी ऑकेजन वेन क्रिटिकल प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स चेंज इवन स्पेशल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैव बीन डेवलप्ड टू असिस्ट प्रोसेस इवेल्युएशन डिवाइसेस हैज बीन डेवलप्ड टू मेजर टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेशर इनसाइड ए कंटेनर इवन टू मेजर डिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ कंटेनर सर्फेसेस एज दे रिस्पॉन्स टू चेंजेज इन डिफरेंशियल प्रेशर एज वेल एज इवन टू मेजर द रोटेशन ऑफ द कंटेनर विच इज नॉर्मली परफॉर्म टू इन आर्डर टू इम्प्रूव द हीट ट्रांसफर एफिशियंसी द ग्रोइंग पब्लिक अवेयरनेस ऑफ द रिस्क ऑफ फूड पॉइजनिंग एंड द कमर्शियल प्रेशर टू प्रोड्यूस मोर एंड मोर हाई क्वालिटी सेफ स्टेबल फूड्स विल इनकरेज मोर कंप्यूटर रिटार्ट प्रोसेस कंट्रोल सिस्टम हेयर द डिग्री ऑफ ओवर कुकिंग थर्मली एसोसिएटेड विथ प्रोडक्ट एंड प्रोसेस वेरिएबल्स विल बी ट्रिम्ड एंड ऑप्टिमाइज फॉर द सेक ऑफ प्रोडक्ट क्वालिटी एंड प्रोसेस एफिशियंसी अनदर वे ऑफ इम्प्रूविंग द प्रोसेस आर इज द combining this heat treatment as well as control of water activity and ph to preserve the food it is possible that new forms of preservation may be combined with conventional retorting to further optimize the delivered lethality and maximize product quality while reducing manufacturing costs and synergies are practically interesting because the combination of uh, these processes like hurdle technology aspect hurdle technology we will take up separately in some other lecture and this is a promising means of enhancing safety while retaining the quality of the food now, now we have seen that uh, how various control of various factors may slow down may inhibit or the growth of microorganism may or may completely kill a, or inactivate a microorganism or reduce the load contamination load and thereby increase the shelf life of food material thank you